I mean, come on. That's so sick. That's outrageous. His life. I'm on. Oh, <laughs> I'm so jealous of you, Matthew Mercer. I know you're not watching us. And if you do, hi, how are you going? Thank you for all the hard work. <laughs> come on the show. We'd love to interview you. Yeah, we'd really love to interview you, Matthew Mercer. Just send him an email. Um, yeah, I'm sure he's got heaps of time. Well, hello, 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 and welcome back to Gateway to Anime. How are you all? What's going on? We are the podcast where we try and throw open the gates to anime, whether you're a new fan, a returning fan, or an anime veteran. Ever wanted to get into anime but didn't know where to start? We are the podcast for you, but we are also catering to those who are more experienced or tragic veterans like us. I am Sam, one of your hosts, and never going to call myself an expert on anime because that's just... Not something that I'm willing to do, but I am a massive fan. been watching it for over 25 years. Now, just a little bit of housekeeping before we start. If you like what we're doing, you can find us on our webpage at gatewaytoanime.com. You can also find us on our social media platforms, which are TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube, which hopefully you are watching this podcast on. But if you are a podcast listener, you can go to Spotify and or Apple Podcasts and give us a five-star review because it actually seriously helps and if you really like what we're doing you can find us on our patreon patreon.com forward slash gateway to anime where every second friday this podcast is fortnightly we will be putting on patreon a patreon special episode as well as early releases and behind the scenes footage now that's out of the way charlie how you going good good just happy to be here as an anime tragic you know the- <laughs> <laughs> i did just call it's us like, that didn't I? yeah and just like will i ever grow up no, no, I don't think I will. <laughs> it's a bit alarming. But I'm excited to talk about something about anime, which I don't think we really have touched on that much. And it kind of goes hand in hand with a lot of my interests growing up and things like that. So I'm excited to get into like uh, honoring some people who maybe kind of go under acknowledged in terms of anime fandom. So it's exciting to talk about that. True that. Graham, how are you, mate? Good, mate. Yeah. Ready to talk about some silky, sexy voices. That is indeed what we are here to do. We are here today to talk about voice acting in anime. But of course, it'll get a bit broader than that. But voice acting, and especially between the English and the Japanese actors who do it. Of course, there's a thing called localization, which I guess I'll just dive into this straight away. Localizing something is when instead of obviously, if you just lift a Japanese script straight into English and then translate that, it's going to be a bit clunky. Right? It's going to be like, well, what? That doesn't quite translate the way... I mean, it translates exactly, but contextually, it's going to be kind of weird, right? Happens a, a, it's much bigger in video games, particularly JRPGs, but localizing or localization is a process by which essentially they... Not only do they take the words and translate them from Japanese to English, but they also contextualize everything so it all makes sense in the story. Now, you can dive deeper into this, and I'll probably explain that pretty basically, but essentially localization is just making it make sense <laughs> to an American audience, to an English audience, to those it is trying to talk to. And it's the same if it was to go in from Japanese to Chinese or whatever, that you have localization teams across many, many different streams who then make it make sense. And sometimes it's not very good. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. Sometimes it's better. These days it's pretty good, all right? It used to be much more uh, interesting to say the least, especially, uh, I mean, the fan subs back in the day, you know, sometimes. Actually, funnily enough, as we've mentioned on the show before, some of the old fan subs in the OG days, we're talking to you OG fans now, sometimes they'd have things like little brackets and like this thing means this. Yeah, at least like, I love little, that like, stuff. thing at the top of the screen, like little, uh, it was all yellow uh, yeah, subtitles. Yeah. And it right. would actually contextualize things a bit more than yeah. we get these days. But yeah, I think the localization was a problem when a big company bought a huge IP and was kind of like, I don't really know what to do with this, so we're going to localize it and just kind of get it out because it's going to make money and it's for kids. So like you, know, you saw happen with a lot of shows, uh, oh, four kids dubs, Naruto, <laughs> basically. Yes. But there, And we'll get into it when we start talking about the American um, localization because obviously the main company that kind of changed the landscape of that is Funimation Yes, and how they kind of started – dubbing and localizing and getting a team together and using and now like honestly the like dubs are really great now they're really yeah. fantastic and the acting is top notch just full disclosure i think all of us sitting here are subtitle people i prefer to listen to the japanese voice acting yep. um there's something about it that i really love but i actually have a couple of shows where i kind of prefer the english dub so we'll get into that later as well there's some really fucking good ones out there so what we're going to do now is we're just going to go through some of our favorite 
Japanese voice acting. And throughout the course of this episode, we will talk about the craft of it and, of course, the difference between Japanese and American voice acting and just kind of how important it is, especially because obviously almost every anime is an adaptation from a manga. Not always, obviously, but almost off, almost always the case. So obviously it's a big elevation. Of course, whenever you see motion, obviously from, you know, a still page, I mean, of course, some of those, the more incredibly descript uh, prescriptive and well-placed mangas do have a real flow to your eye when you're following it through the panels on the page. But of course, nothing will come close to actual animation and action. And then you throw in music, sound design, and of course, voice actors. Why I personally, I know you're the manga boy, mm -hmm. and some people are, you know, manga fans first and foremost. But for me, I, I mean, apart from things like Tokyo Ghoul and, you know, Berserk, where I think it's more because the anime adaptations were so bad, I almost always prefer the anime to a manga myself. Or if you just can't hold yourself back and you've got to read Attack on Titan four years before everyone else thinking about it. That is the only time that I'll go and <laughs> read a years. manga is if I like <laughs> just, I read all of Bleach, I read Naruto, I read ahead for all of those. Yeah. Uh, but every time I come back to it, I'm like, really should avoid it it's so yeah. much better <laughs> um, anyway so we'll jump in i'm it's gonna so start. dependent on the adaptation though because yeah. i've read quite a few mangas that are better than the anime counterpart of course and they you exist. do and also this is interesting when it comes to casting voice actors well, and a good point. bringing characters to life if people have a certain idea of what that character sounds like in their head it's similar to like casting books and that kind of thing it yes. can really break your immersion from it if you've like been reading for years and you're like finally it's adapted and someone comes up with a voice that you're like that is not all <laughs> yeah. what I was expecting. Yeah. I remember this happened with Black Clover, um, yes. with the voice actors playing Asta, um, and everyone at first was off it. Now everyone's really into it. So it kind of like it grew. I think that, that voice actor like committed to the thing and was like, "No, this is happening." And they kind of it was jarring for a lot of people, but it ended up being like now kind of iconic. So it can really bring to life a character or really damage it depending on what performance you're getting and what people have expectations for. So and also what I find interesting, and I think unfortunately for a lot of English voice actors is that we hear the Japanese voices first, always, because obviously they do it first, and then it gets translated, and then English dubs come later. So again, it's also a real thing. We're going to talk about one of these guys later, who I think is an amazing voice actor, but comparing them, you can't really help but compare them to the Japanese counterparts because you've heard it for, unless you've only ever heard the I was going to say, though, like sometimes you can only access the dubs. Like what if you just watch yeah, it on true. TV? So like yeah, well, back in the day, yeah, if true, you yeah. just had Adult Swim or... What is it called? Um, Adult Swim and Toonami, is that the thing? Yes. Yeah, like they were dubbed, so you hear that. Like that's why Cowboy Bebop, I think people have such a love for the dub of Cowboy Bebop. True. Because a lot of us in Australia in particular, my friends, only had access to that when it was airing on TV, that kind of thing. So it was sort of jarring to then go to the Japanese voice cast of it. And I had this with a couple of things. Well, actually, while we're on this topic, before we dive into our sort of pick, hand-picked uh, favourites and talking through them, I actually found the same with Kenshin. Yes. Kenshin because we had the D you had the DVDs mm -hmm. at home and that's what I first watched it on and it was the English dub and then when I went and heard the Japanese one I was like, it was like whoa 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 because obviously in the Japanese dub it's a woman doing Kenshin's voice and that happens a lot by the way I mean almost all shonen protagonists uh, Flashpoint not all of them but a lot Naruto Luffy women Bart Simpson. Ash Bart Simpson <laughs> Ash Ketchum um, you know, it happens almost Edward all the time. Elric yeah, Edward Elric, of course. Yeah, We're yeah. going to talk about all these people, but it's interesting. But then, obviously, that's not jarring. It's great. Often they're absolutely extraordinary and you don't even notice or think about it. But when I did go from what was quite obviously a female voice to a male voice between going backwards from English to, I was like, whoa, okay, whoa, okay, mate, whoa. That is so much more high-pitched than I'm used to, you know? And I, I think both voice actors are extraordinary, but I will say I kind of almost preferred the Kenshin dub. My argument is it's what you watch first you prefer. I really do think mm. this is the case. Like, because there's so many examples where I'm just like, but that was a great dub. And you're like, unless it's something really, and it's mostly down because I think at this day and age, you can kind of assume that the actors are going to be good, right? Yeah. In everything. And it's down to dialogue and, as you are saying, localization and script writing and what which direction they decide to take the show in. Look, it's interesting. That's why, that's why I wanted to do this because it's not just simply an episode of us being like, these are voice actors that we like. That we're going to talk. That's what I came with. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we can just do a broader conversation yeah, about why yeah, we yeah. like it, you know, and what, exactly what we've been talking about. So I'm going to jump in with one of my favorite voice actors and one in particular, but I'm going to talk here about Daisuke Ono. So Daisuke Ono is a Japanese voiceover artist and singer. A lot of them are. A lot of them singers as well. And of course, obviously, the Japanese music industry is massive. I mean, 
my God, we, we barely even touched on J-pop or anything, and that's probably not a place to do so on this show, but there is a lot of meeting of the worlds there. So Daisuke Giano, actually he studied, interestingly, he studied TV production at university, so he wanted to work in TV production. But now this is what I read in his Wikipedia, and it's a little bit vague, but I'm going to read it out. But uh, he failed when he was tasked with directing a large group of people. So I'm guessing he had like a, an assignment where he had to be a director or an a, a first AD or something. And I'm sort of putting the pieces here together. Yeah, someone's and always got this from an interview and put it on Wikipedia. Someone's just like, I, yeah, lifted yeah. that out. And I was like, oh, damn, I haven't got the time to properly dive <laughs> into exactly what the story is. But anyway, so essentially, I guess it just wasn't for him. And maybe he had some bad experiences. And he then moved into radio production. During the creation of a radio drama that he was working on, he had to step in as a vocal performer because of a lack of people to do so. So there's obviously a cast member didn't turn up or there weren't enough cast to do the show. So he stepped in, which of course led him to pursue this professionally because Daisuke Yono is one of the most iconic voice actors in Japan right now. But uh, he actually started his music career in 2007 as well. It's sort of a very similar time he started voice acting professionally under his own name with the mini album Kinemosu. And he actually has numerous musical ventures and hosting jobs as well as his extensive voiceover career. So he's pretty prolific. Most, oh, everyone we're talking about today yeah, is incredibly absolutely. prolific. We're talking about the big guns here. Some notable roles you might notice of Daisuke Ono. So Sebastian, Black Butler, he, of course, which he won the Seiyu Award for, for Best Lead Actor. For the, so Seiyu, I don't know if we mentioned this yet, Seiyu, voice actor. Mm -hmm. translation so these are the say you awards voice actor awards if we say say you we talk we means voice actor so yeah the fourth awards he won for black butler he also won for jotaro kujo in jojo's bizarre adventure which is one of his most famous yeah famous roles and also as best personality at the ninth say you awards uh that was when he did shukuro sukishima in bleach now graham mm. Who's that? Which character is that? Can you remember? Because I couldn't. I had to look. I had to be like, who the hell's that? And then I'd look it up. And I was like, say it again. Tsukishima. Yeah, I know, right? I had to do the same thing. I was like, no. That's like, oh, the full bringer. Oh, God. He's the lead That's bad why. guy. That's the full bringers. Is he? And I, was I hate like, this guy. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Because at first I was like, Tsukishima. How do I not recognize the name from Bleach? And I was like, it's either the Bound Arc yeah, yeah. or the Full, full bring arc. arc. And it was a Full Bring Arc. So, yes, anyway. Don't he was very hold good. that against him. I, he won an award for it. So Didn't he did fantastic. Yeah, he won an award for that voice. Glad someone got someone out of I'm that arc. <laughs> <laughs> someone got someone. Jesus. God is a shit arc. Anyway, so, yes, of course, Sebastian Black Butler, Jotaro Kujo in JoJo's, Tsukishima Bleach, Arthur, Blue Exorcist, Ku Ichijo in Persona 4, Sinbad, as I mentioned on my underrated show, Sinbad in Maji, and of course, The Adventures of Sinbad, Shitaro Midorima in Kuroko no Basket. I thought you were saying Midoriya. Oh, Midoriya. And I was like, <laughs> wow, there's a lot of rage. Versatility. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, unfortunately. Vano in 91 Days, one of the big characters in that. Droll in Seven Deadly Sins. Also, I had to bring it in here, Mitamaya in the remake of Legend of the Galactic Heroes. Of course, that was getting in there. And Charlotte, for you, Michelle Evan in Seventh Time Loop. What a blessing for us all. <laughs> <laughs> Love Seventh Time Loop. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, that's just some. Um, but for me, the big role for Daisuke Yono is, of course, Erwin Smith in Attack on Titan. Now, that is the real winner for me. That's why I actually chose him, because for me... My favorite piece of voice acting ever, and there are some incredible moments of voice acting in this great medium. But for me, my absolute favorite speech ever is Erwin Smith's speech in season three, part two, retake of Shingashina, return to Shingashina, when he convinces all of the scouts to ride to their death so Levi can take down the Beast Titan. Now that to me is quite possibly the best piece of voice acting I have ever heard. I've watched it. I've watched that clip on YouTube probably over a hundred times. I'm not even joking. And <laughs> I just think that it's him on display. Now, as you, can you must see be so are, fun at parties. Man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Try and chat to you. You're like, right. Like, <laughs> right. Ride my soldiers! So it's like, just ignore him. <laughs> Fight! <laughs> Tataka! Yes, I'm not a huge nerd. But anyway, but as you can see from a lot of these names here, he does very sort of like leadership roles, very kind of commanding presence, got a very like sort of authoritative voice, I think is kind of his major thing. So just had to mention Daisuke Giono because yeah, and if you haven't watched Attack on Titan, what are you doing? So that is Daisuke Giono, one of my favorite voice actors going around at the moment. Charlie, who do you have? So, 
There was so many to pick from. I actually have a couple. But I'm going to start with my main one, yep. which is, of course, Romy Park, oh. who is – an incredibly famous voice actor. Yes. And she's an interesting case because she's got like, as you were saying, your actor has got a kind of like a tendency towards characters who are leadership positions or yes. military or like riling yeah. people up and saying the big speeches, that kind of thing. I would say that this particular Seiyu, she has got a bit of, she's got two different kind of things that she tends mm. to do. One of them is like shonen preteen protagonist <laughs> or like teenager protagonist who's like a bit more emotional, that kind of thing. Or she is like the cool punk yeah. woman, like who's kind of a bit quirky, bit edgy, bit edgy. And so I'll read out some of her roles before I get into her life. She is most famous for Tamari in Naruto, yep. Edward Elric in Full Metal Alchemist no. Brotherhood and Full Metal Alchemist oh. 2003. Yes, Nana from Nana, oh. uh, Naruto from Persona Four. Persona Four is a stacked voice Dude, cast. I was got every single wild. person I was mentioning. I was like. Wow, I guess everyone was in Persona 4. And that was a really good adaptation as opposed to Persona 5, which is a terrible anime adaptation. <laughs> it's so bad. I remember I made you, I was like, watch Persona 5, it's going to be great. And you just called me and you are like, what happened? What the, the hell was, was that? that? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that wasn't very good, was it? But Persona 4, go off. Really good adaptation, yeah, okay, actually. Okay. Uh, it's like one of the only ones I'd say I'd recommend watching as an anime. On that note, we've got Hunter Hunter as Pakanoda, which is one of the um, uh, Phantom Troop oh, characters. Jesus. Cool. Obviously, Attack on Titan, Zoe Hangi. Zoe Hangi. And Pluto, Helena. Yeah, she was Helena. Uh, yeah. yeah. And honestly, just so much more. So good. Yeah. So she has been around for a while, also a singer, went to drama school. She's a bit older now, but she still is working a bunch. So kind of like, honestly, over hundreds and, and all of these voice actors have got hundreds oh. and hundreds of credits. Like we can't just go straight <laughs> through. We've we very much cherry picked these out. Because yes. otherwise we'd sit here all day just listing their credits. And one thing I'll say about her is I really think that if you have time, this is just video is just going to be me being like, go and look up this clip. Like this is yeah. us pointing <laughs> people in other directions. But um, if you do have time, please go and look up the recording of Romy Park voicing Zoe from Attack on Titan. Absolutely incredible. Yes. You see her in the booth. You see how she performs and how she's – it's just it's honestly a masterclass in voice acting. And I think her voice is – although she has got a particular and a definite like tone that you kind of know it's her, I think she does have a lot of versatility as well because – I mean, incredible. yeah, because those characters, they're, although they all have like some stuff, you know, like she, she's known as like tough, calm, mature, preteen, teenage boys, or she's like a spunky, punky woman. Spunky and punky. Spunky, spunky punky. and punky. Yeah, both of those. Uh, but yeah, she's <laughs> she's genuinely probably my favorite voice actor ever. Yeah, and I had to swap because I actually, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood is a particularly good dub as well. It is. It's really fantastic. And I watched it dubbed first. I watched 2003 Full Metal Alchemist first. So... I was very used to that English voice actor who sounds completely different. So different. But I think that, and if you go and look up on YouTube, this, no, sorry. <laughs> but there's a scene in Full My Larkmas Brotherhood, which I think is superior in the Japanese voice acting. And that is, of course, the I'll come back for you scene. Oh. Just an incredible performance. Like, honestly, she does the desperate scream and the high stakes of anime so fucking well. And the thing about these voice actors is, with your voicing an anime, you have to fucking commit. Like, oh. you are not just doing, like, a funny little cutesy voice. Like, you know that character is going to go to hell and back. You know, like, they are – there actually is a tall order for an actor. Oh. It's not just as simple as, like, as we're kind of used to in Western cartoons, just kind of being, like, you know, doing a one kind of trick pony. It's like you're expected to go through all of the gamuts of emotions and all of these beats, and I think that she is one that is truly fantastic. So – Thank you, Romy Park, for all of your service to the anime <laughs> world. Um, also won the first Seiyu Award for Nana. Oh. So the very first one, she won Best Female Performance as Nana. Wow. Well deserved. And that is a really moody, really like wonderfully kind of aloof performance, which uh, suits that character so well. And then you got Hanji, who's just so unhinged, like delightfully so. Wow. And Edward, who has to go between like, you know, intense emotion and also just screaming about being called short in like a beat, you know? <laughs> so I think that, Love it. <laughs> yeah, she's she's truly fantastic. And oh, yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. So my, I don't know if he's my favorite all time, but he's definitely my favorite of right now. Kenjiro Suda. I mean, what a voice. Oh. What a voice. I don't even want to describe it without getting, you know, myself all flustered. <laughs> like, it is it is a sexy voice. Yeah. It's ridiculous. It is, it's actually ridiculous. You know, and I guess there's different levels, but he's like, it's it's such a textural, 
I don't want to say erotic. I just don't know what's going on right now. <laughs> but it is a slow, methodical, gravelly, low voice. Like I don't know how to describe it. But it, some of his roles, everyone will know him. Um, Nanami. I mean, Jujutsu Kaisen. I mean, we saw what happened to the internet when you know the choking scene happened in the last oh, arc. Cause- like, <laughs> people lost their damn minds. There's also a viral video of him recording a scene from Jiu-Jitsu Kaisen that went viral because it, it's so good. He's mm. so fantastic in it as well. There's a, I don't know what, there's a, a clip that floats around on TikTok with two, like three voice actors delivering the same line. Yes. Yeah, and so it's good. him, it, he does the last one and the other two just fall over and are just like, oh my God. It's ridiculous. It's, yeah, you should look that up. On, God damn it. You should look that up on YouTube, yeah. actually. It's like- look for it right here. Right here. After this, after this. Maybe. I don't know. Or open up another um, tab and come back. Yeah, he definitely has a style and a tone of voice that I don't want to say he's not got a lot of range, but you definitely know when he's in the room. Um, he does Overhaul as well from My Hero right. Academia. Uh, Kishibi from Chainsaw Man. He's the guy with the scars and the yes. cigarettes and stuff like that. Uh, Seto Kaiba. Which I didn't know he was Seto Kaiba, but yeah. yeah. Tatsu from Where the House Has, but like it goes on and on. He's Haynes and Attack on Titan. Hannes, yeah. Hannes. Well, so. I would argue that's one, that is a time where he really does show his versatility. Really does. He's not doing his normal. Like, yeah, they're great. You know, his yeah. super gravelly voice. He's actually, I mean, you can hear bits of it, but he's much, he's pitched his voice much higher for that. Yeah. Like, I'm not saying he's got no range, but I think what everyone will probably be more familiar <laughs> everyone is. Everyone wants him to do one thing. Yeah, that slow, <laughs> methodical, sexy voice he's got. I remember first, I think the first time I really, like, really started for me was Joker in. Oh, in Fire Force. Fire Force. Because it is really slow and it's almost like a reflection on the guy's abilities. Mm. who's like that wispy, smoky sort of power. And yeah. he's like, Joker. Yeah. He has one of the most distinctive voices on earth. Yeah. Honestly, it's wild. Oh. Because he's chain smoking every day, probably. <laughs> like he just—I don't know—he's in pretty amazing nick. I don't he know is. If he has like just looking right. at pictures of him there, and I said to you before record, I was like, I can't believe he's fifty-four years old. He's in outrageous. And he looks. Nick. Like, he's also hot AF. Like, oh yeah, yeah. He's, he's a really handsome man. Super good-looking dude. <laughs> like, handsome man. Most handsome. of these voice actors are because they're actors as well. So yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, was he a singer? No, he's he is a English literature major. What? But then went into theatre. Really? Yeah. God, yeah, so, cool. so English lit major, um, but then wanted to be an actor because, you voice. know, so <laughs> did a lot of theatre work and then did some, you know, commercial type stuff, TV and, and then, but sort of, I think his voice really was his, you know, oh, yeah. the golden goose, whatever, and <laughs> sort of flowed into that. But he's been doing this since like 1995. Oh, he's been around forever. So he's been, a, like, I just can't go through his credits no. fast enough. And also he's one of the few voice actors that you'll be like, because obviously sometimes it's harder to pick him out. Like I'm start, I can pick Daisuke Ono these days. Okay, every time I hear Kenjiro Suda, I'm like, yep, there he is. That's Kenjiro. Like almost inst- like, when we're watching One Piece Red, the film, I was like, that's Kenjiro Suda. Mm. Um, but yeah, there aren't many I can do that to because it is hard to tune your ear in. But there's the guy who's in ReZero who plays like the Duke, and he's got that real oh, also- sort of voice. Also does uh, the Matador of Love, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. But I can't, okay. I can't remember what's talking about. But he's name, yeah. someone else. I'm like, oh, that's that guy. Yeah, yeah very. He's just a lilting kind of almost yeah. sing songy kind of. Yeah, he's really voice. good. Voice. Well. He's also fantastic. We should look him up. Yeah. yeah, there are a couple of people that are cast in particular roles and known as like a voice actor who's known as like the Queen of the Sandeers and who voiced like yeah. Tiger and all of those characters like yeah. in, the, in the early 2000s. And um, there's also that guy that's like. Got that big voice, and he is um, Ishkanda in fucking uh, what is it? Fate Zero, like the, oh yeah yeah, 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 like that kind oh, of yeah, that real big, big bombastic. Yes, yeah, 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 so yeah. a couple of people who like do specialize in that. But honestly, you might think that, but some here's one that I'm just gonna mention her. her she's actually like a bit of a on like these are kind of all three we've mentioned are like kind of legends have been around for a long time. So this one is just a someone who is currently on my mind because when I looked up the voice actor of this show that I love so much of Free Run, oh. I was just so shocked to see the other characters that this voice actress, this Seiyu, has done because if you want some versatility, oh my Lord. So Tatsumi Tanezuki has done like over 100 credits. I was like looking at them, I kind of go, yeah, right, you know, we've got Uatani from Fruits Basket. We've got Vivi from Vivi. Uh, oh, right. Fluoride Eyes Song. Eye song. Yeah, right. We've got Apothecary Diaries, Gyokyo, and this one, which really shocked me. So we've got Free Run from Free Run. She plays Free Run. Yeah. So Free Run is a very kind of monotonous, sort of like wise character who speaks in a certain level, quite calm, collected. 
But this voice actor also voices Anya Forger in Spy Family. Oh. So I'm like, this is some actual range. Anya, for those who don't know, is a, what, a six-year-old child? Something like that. Yeah, a six-year-old child yeah. who is like, fully childlike, high up there, free run. Like they could not be more different. And this voice actor is, she's honestly incredible. And I think that when it comes to range, there's a few voice actors like this. Another one that I found because I was really impressed because I was watching some behind the scenes footage of Jitsu Kaisen. Mm. And I was thinking about how my most hated character of the last 10 years has been Mahito, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. And I was like, who is this voice actor? Because they, every episode, do not like they are always going at full throttle. Like oh, they yeah. are giving an incredible performance, and I hate them so much because I. But I love their voice acting. Nobunaga Shimazaki, and his other role is Yuki in Fruits Basket, which is a very calm and collected oh, wow. shojo protagonist. So I just kind of love the, those. I was like, that could not be more different if they tried. This is wild. Acting. It's a thing that people do. <laughs> acting. <laughs> Showing some range. Acting. Talent. <laughs> I can't talk about voice acting without talking about my high school crush. One of the people that I just like was obsessed with in high school. One of the most iconic voice actors of the most iconic roles. And that is Mamoru Miyano, mm. who is a very, very famous voice actor, musician, celebrity, done a lot of work, live action as well. But in the early 2000s, it was just voicing everything you know most famously voiced light yagami from death note mm -hmm. iconic of course tamaki from Orion high school host club and got zero from vampire night that is something that is a real throwback that no one yeah, will know yeah. but that's embarrassing for him so i wanted to mention that he voiced zero <laughs> everyone has um, done i was like come on Mabu. no he was obviously brilliant in it good for him um and Seshiro Nagi from Blue Lock, who is the white Oh, Nagi, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, Nagi. Oh, shit. So incredible. And this this voice actor, like, he's also, yeah, he's a celebrity. Like, he's a bit older now. But the vo he, the first ever, that this is what funny, actually, because I was debating talking about him or another voice actor, and I saw that the first Seiyu Awards, he was nominated for Death Note. Didn't win. Wow. And I went, beat him. who the fuck beat Light Yaga? Like, it's an iconic voice role. To be fair, the second season hadn't happened yet. You know, the maniacal laughing course, and like the. the but also, if you you guys don't know, Aaron High School Host Club. So the fact that Light is voiced by the same actor who does Tamaki is truly insane. Like they could not be. <laughs> one is like a whoa, like kind of like fun, and the other one is Light. You know, yeah, like yeah, so yeah. intense and like blah blah. Eating a potato chip, making it look great. <laughs> but the voice actor that beat him was an actor called Jun Fukuyama, who is. The voice actor, and he won for playing Lelouch. And you know what? Oh. That's kind of fair enough. If I was going to be like... That's a stacked award, what a, what a competitive category that was. It was like, basically, you want the mecha version of Death Note? Or like, <laughs> I don't know. And which or actor, which like, cool of, guy yeah, do you want to win? And so, yeah, those two. So there's a bunch, and there's just so many out there. Oh. I've got to also mention, sorry, I'll stop no, no, soon. No, it's all good. I just Go really off. like voice <laughs> actors because I used to be an actor and I wanted to. And when we get it, you'll hear my, like, fangirlness when we get to we're talking about Funimation because I like just wanted to be them so badly <laughs> and was like on forums and like went to conventions and met them all like but I love them this other actress is called Ali Koga and she's Komi and Komi-san can't communicate oh, yeah. Kaguya in Love is War Mate. now this the scene that really stands out to me so it's kind of fun to talk about your favorite scene with them and like their favorite bit of performance but my yes. favorite bit of her performance is when there is a scene in which like Kaguya goes into her brain and there's like a trial that happens and there's all these different versions of herself putting her on trial and she's voicing every single different one of herself. And it's such an amazing tour de force of a voice acting moment that I really, really impressed me. And I kind of thought to myself even while I was watching, I was like, is this all the same voice actor? And yeah, it was. Kaguya, obviously when she talks has a very distinctive style of talking, but then when she gets to go into her head and be like, lose her mind and be kind of like girly and flustered and there's a lot of like range in that role in itself. So I think that she deserves some accolades for that because that's a great performance of a great character. All right, so I'm going to now jump into a notable, a notable honorable mention because I'd be remiss not to mention Yuki Kaiji, of course, most famous for voicing Eren Yeager. So some of his major roles, of course, outside of being Eren Yeager, one of the most iconic voices of the last 10 years in the anime industry. He's also Prince in Space Dandy. Oh, yeah. He did Kenma Kozume in Haikyuu, which is about to be the star of the film that at the time of recording is coming out in 10 days in Japan. Ooh. 16th. Amazing. Furious that I can't be there to watch it, even though you would barely follow along like 
I'm vibing on this, dude. Um, <laughs> anyway, Kenma, he's also Meliodas, Seven Deadly Sins. Quite a bit of range here. Clement in the new Pokemon sort of series. He's Rip in Undead Unlock. He's Julian Mintz in the remake of Legend of the Galactic Hero. He's also Prince Dida in Ranking of Kings. As well as Speedo Sound Sonic, One Punch Man. One of the funniest characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, God, that is funny. Also... Ace Attorney, Fe oh, he's Phoenix Wright in Ace oh, Attorney. Oh, hell yeah. And Love now, one of the big reasons I had to bring him up is because I'm literally, for those of you watching, wearing a hat with this character's name emblazoned upon it. He is, of course, Shoto Todoroki in My Hero Academia. Yuki Kaji is, and this is, you know, he's in hundreds of lists. So, like, he is, like, absolutely top tier, king of the hill, like, right up there. So, absolutely brilliant. But now, we could sit here all day talking about our favorite Japanese voice actors. But before oh, yeah. we have a bit doing. more of a chat, do you have anyone else you want to talk about? Uh, Japanese? Yeah, Yasuki Kobayashi. He uh, is Subaru oh, in ReZero. He's yes. also Dr. Stone. Oh, is he um, um, Senku? No, he's Dr. Stone. <laughs> <laughs> That's Senku. No one's ever watched Dr. Stone. <laughs> <laughs> just me. <laughs> yeah. He's just done a lot of things, but I just, you know, I just love him as Subaru. I'm like, oh, so like, good as Subaru. You know, from... Being eaten by rabbits to, you know, trying to psychologically manipulate someone. Like, yeah, he's great. Uh, yeah, it yeah. does that terror really well. Yeah. It's, like, oh. quite disturbing. That show is great. And I oh. think that nails the, like, just and just gets defeated. Like, you know, it starts. So, he's he, yeah, that's a that's a fantastic voice role, actually. Mm. Actually, all the voice acting in ReZero is outstanding. Fantastic. Because, like, Amelia is brilliant yeah. as well. And real delicate, but... Real, but also very yeah, strong. Very strong as well, yeah. Excellent voice. God, ReZero Circuit's so coming out this year. It's been like... Oh, I'm so excited. It's been four years, Graham. It's been 85 years. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to name this person, which is Ri Kugimiya, who was, I mentioned, the queen of Sundia, who voiced Tiger, yes. but also voiced Alphonse Ed Elric. <laughs> so, oh, shit, that's Alphonse. Yeah. Oh, wow. Hey, we got some range. range. We have got some absolute range. So, um, yeah. And... Kagura in Gintama and Happy in Fairy Tale. Oh, Kagura in Gintama. Yeah, wow, yeah. Okay. So like That's big huge. I, again, we're, yeah, these the actors classic are classic Sundere. Yeah. Yeah. These these shows are these are voice actors are truly like top of their game. They're all fantastic and yeah. We can do this forever, but before we start talking about sort of subs and dubs and the difference between the two of them and you know the subtitles versus the English dub, let's talk about some really famous dub actors because mm. English voice actors who also are quite extraordinary and are now becoming huge celebrities in their own right and you know none more so than Matthew Mercer now anyone who even is D&D &D adjacent knows who Matthew Mercer is because obviously he is the DM and host of Critical Role the biggest D&D &D podcast slash thing in the world but Matthew Mercer, his name's actually Matthew Miller, but um, it's one of those SAG things where you have it to. It was SAG. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. many actors and people who don't know what SAG is at Screen Actors Guild. Basically, the amount of actors happens here as well. I think not necessarily here, but if you have the same name as someone else, you have to change it. Yeah, so a lot of actors don't have their real name, not because they like wanted some stage name, it's because they literally legally couldn't, because someone else had already was on the guild or had a mm. membership. And had their name. So there you go. So obviously American voice actor, also game designer and probably the most famous D&D Dungeon Master in the world. No, not probably. He is. Oh, so like there's no close. competition. <laughs> it's not yeah. even close. Oh, I mean, there is. There's, some, there's like, you know, and people who, you know. D&D like, fans, don't come for me on if that. If you're but, anime adjacent, you probably like d and I can say there's a crossover. All three of us play D&D. The Venn &D. diagram. Uh, it's, it's a full circle at this point. Um, but I think, um, yeah, I, I'd say it's, I, no one could be upset to say that Critical Role didn't take that platform and you know run with it they have a tv series they have like yeah. so many things happening it's a whole empire yeah. and they're awesome i love matthew mercer oh matthew mercer is fantastic so actually interestingly in his early life he struggled with a stutter mm. grew up with a stutter so his father also had a stutter and then ended up helping him he got a speech pathologist and they fixed it in his teen years i believe so interesting to start with that but also he had a brief stint as a member of the la-based comedy troupe the Groundlings. Oh. Now, if anyone doesn't know what the Groundlings are, kind of like Second City, uh, because obviously the Groundlings are LA, Second City, the most famous improvisation troupe in America, Chicago-based. But just some alumni of the Groundlings, Phil Hartman, rest his soul, Kirsten uh, Wig, Melissa McCarthy. Paul Rubens created the P.V. Herman character and show out of the Groundlings. Lorne Michaels was very much Groundlings adjacent and... There's a lot of crossover between Groundlings and, and SNL. But Matthew Mercer was 
a part of that, very, I believe, very briefly in his uh, early days. So he started his career performing as a Waller performer. Now, English Waller. Now, what do you think Waller is? Someone who just stands in the background and goes, whoa. Well, not, you're not actually far off. So Waller actors is literally what you get people in to do crowd noise. Yeah, oh, okay. right. And then she'd be like, Waller, 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 Waller. That's literally where it came from. Right. And so right. he was doing and additional characters. <laughs> but actually in, so in the US it's Waller. They call it Waller. Okay. Uh, in the UK it's Rhubarb. Rhubarb, I was going to say Rhubarb in Australia. Rhubarb, rhubarb. In Australia yeah. it's Rhubarb as well. Yep, so we took it from oh, the English. Okay. In Japan it's Gaia. And obviously South Park, when they do it, rabble, 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 rabble. But that is literally where it comes from. And yeah. it's actually a whole okay. world where they get people in yeah. to become Waller performers. Yeah, that's okay. where you start that's a lot of the time. I do in background crowd noises and whatnot. So yeah, that's where he started. But he's now gone on to become probably one of the most famous voice actors across video games, American cartoons, obviously D&D, slightly different kettle of fish, but anime. He is just absolutely Massive. I mean, let's just do some of this. So he, Levi, Attack on Titan, Kiritsugu Emiya, Fate Zero, uh, Jotaro Kujo, we've got a bit of crossover with Daisuke Yano here. He's also Yamato in Naruto, but second time he had two voices for some reason in the English dub, don't know why. Uh, Trafalgar Law in One Piece, uh, Falco in Cyberpunk Edge Runners, and Leorio, Hunter Hunter. Now that's just How good. a little bit. Like He's done so much anime voice acting. And just for those of you who are gamers out there, you're going to know this man's voice. So he's Leon S. Kennedy in Resident Evil 6. Ganondorf in Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, Curtis Stryker, Mortal Kombat 9, of course. Cole Cassidy, or McCree, formerly known in Overwatch, which is such why one of the first times I yeah, yeah. came across him. Yeah, Graham and yeah. I, are unfortunately, well, we were Overwatch fans. We're no I'm back in, are. baby. You're back in. Oh, God, God help you. <laughs> I got out and I ain't looking back. I have no hobbies. <laughs> That's the real problem. Anyway. Uh, Charlie, Yusuke Kitagawa, Persona 5. Hell yeah. Yes. And soon to be coming out this year, in fact, very close to the time of this recording of this podcast, here's Vincent Valentine in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. So, I mean, oh, come on. That's so sick. That's outrageous. Like, what an outrageous, outrageous. career. <laughs> and he's so still fun. going. Yeah, so fun. His life, I'm on, oh, <laughs> I'm so jealous of you, Matthew Mercer. I know you're not watching us. And if you do, hi, how are you going? Thank you for all the hard work. <laughs> come on the show. We'd love to interview you. Yeah, we'd really love to interview you, Matthew Mercer. Just send him an email. Um, yeah, I'm sure he's got heads of time. Um, let's see. <laughs> Must have missed the email. Yeah, he's he's incredible and his voice acting is great. And he makes it, one thing that makes Critical Role so special is because and it's interesting this is a bit of a vague crossover here, is the campaign is full of voice actors. Yeah. So when they are role-playing and when he is role-playing, it's like world-class. You know, oh. these are these people are incredible improvisers, Wild. incredible actors, and they're all multi-talented. And in the party is the voice actor I'm going to be talking about, Laura Bailey, who is amazing, who has done so much work in terms of video, mostly video games I would say she's most famous for and voice acting for anime. Basically, she was one of those actors who got her start. So Funimation, just a bit of a back thing about what Funimation is, I think we should say, just so we can kind of continue. In the early 1990s, Japanese-born businessman Jen Fukunaga was approached by his uncle, Nagafumi Hori, who was working as a producer for the Toei Company. Hori proposed that if Fukunaga could start a production company and raise enough money, Toei Animation would license its rights to Dragon Ball franchise to the United States. Fukunaga met with co-worker Daniel Kokonoa, whose family owned a feed mill in Texas, and convinced Kokonoa's family to sell their business and serve as an investor for this new company. The company was founded on May 9th, 1994 as Funimation Productions. <laughs> so this wow. is why Funimation, which is in Texas, this is why all these like voice actors that we're going to be talking about are from Texas. Mm. And this is why a lot of anime, so Funimation ended up obviously becoming a huge thing. Yeah. They licensed a lot of shows after the success of Dragon Ball. So a lot of these voice actors got their start in Dragon Ball kind of, and then they have a group of, a team of people who, as you were saying, were lo doing the localization. And yep. a lot of voice actors are also like series directors and script writers and mm. translators and things like that. So it's this huge kind of company. And then obviously expanded to involve, involve streaming, all of that stuff and it kind of became its whole thing. But Massive. these actors all kind of got their start in anime voice acting at Funimation. And there was also like four kids and as we, we actually were had the pleasure of talking to Veronica Taylor, who is a Pokemon voice actor, who was the original voice for Ash Ketchum. Shout out. Those kind of – fantastic. Love Childhood, it. absolutely. Oh, she's the best. <laughs> um, those kind of voice acting and that thing was very different to what Funimation was doing. I'd say Funimation has kind of paid the way for how anime is now treated for dubs and localizations. So – 
That's amazing. Thank you for doing that, Funimation. Uh, but Laura Bailey, she made her voice acting debut as Kid Trunks in the Funimation dub of Dragon Ball Z yep. and has since voiced Emily in Glitter Force, Toru Honda in Fruits Basket, oh. Lust in Full Metal Alchemist and Full Huge. Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, and she also played Shin-chan and Maka in Soul Eater. Oh, Maka. So huh? those are her like most famous anime roles. Most famously played Abby in The Last of Us Part 2. Ah, uh, uh, yes. Because another mem- cast member of Critical Role is, of course, Ashley, who is the voice actor of Ellie mm-hmm. in The Last of Us. Both of them made an appearance in the live-action TV show as well. Yeah. Um, Laura Bailey is awesome. The thing that I loved her the most for was Toru Hondo in the original of Fruits course. Basket. And this is so cool. See, I love it when pe- – so Laura Bailey is incredibly famous now. But she is like – all of these insane video characters, like they are so busy. They're booked and blessed, all of these critical role guys, video games, doing this, the, you know, like actually, like when you see the behind the scenes of The Last of Us, they are also doing the acting in the, like, mm. you know, the stop, performance stop Performance capture. Performance capture. Like yeah. they get the voice actors to do that as well. So they're, you know, really busy. But uh, when Fruits Basket came back in 2019, they got the original voice cast back and Laura Bailey came and perform Toru Honda again, which I think would Damn. probably be like an amazing thing as she's kind of like, no, this like that role meant so much to me. And this is like, they still kind of find the time to come back and do these roles in anime, which I'm sure I'd pay probably, I, mean, I don't know for a fact and please don't sue me Funimation, I, but I just assume they probably pay less than video game voice acting would. You think so? Yes, but that's, but I we think- We don't know that for a fact, we are purely opinion. But I just, like, I feel like it's kind of comparing like, doing a TV show versus like a Marvel movie, you know, like it's the video game industry has got so much money. Yeah. It's a pretty safe assumption. So they got all the original voice actors back, which is so fantastic. Interestingly enough, there is a character in the final scene of fruits basket who has one line and it's the God and they got Matthew Mercer to do it. He only has one line and it was brilliant. I cried. I watched that in the dark (laughs) Uh, because that was my childhood. And I also really liked Laura Bailey's um, rendition of that character and if those of you who have watched Fruits Basket, you know that Toru is very high pitched, very innocent. So to have the character, the same voice actor, voice the character of Lust in Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, like Huge. that is some range. Fun fact: Laura Bailey is married to another voice actor called Travis Willingham, who is also a cast member of Critical Role, who voiced Mustang. Oh, so you know that's a bit of an awkward fight scene. They that must have had to idea. avoid together. <laughs> but um, yeah, he. So this uh, this critical role is just we could talk about. We could honestly do an entire episode on the anime characters that the critical role cast have oh, that's wild, yeah. voiced. But yeah, it's part of the reason why that podcast and show is so enjoyable is because they're just such talented actors. Oh. But yeah, Laura Bailey. I honestly, I went to I went to see her at a panel at Supernova years ago in Perth. Well, before she was like famous, famous uh, and Travis Willingham as well. And honestly, I was just like, I just wanted to be them so badly. And I want to be them then. Imagine how I feel now that they're like <laughs> killing it, you know. So I'm makes me so happy that these random voice actors that I have been following and been a, a, like a fangirl of from the start have actually truly like killed it. So that's awesome. And they're, yeah, they're really talented. So good oh, for them. Absolutely. But just before we jump over to Graham's absolutely iconic English voice actor. I just want to go back on the story you told about Funimation when the guy's like, convince this family to sell their family business yeah. in Texas, like to to fund this. Like at that time, would Japanese have been a really cartoon, really like. like tenuous business proposition, and like not done before. Like you know, completely wow. like where there is no use. There is no use case. There is no yeah. like this has happened in the past and will work. What a crazy thing to have done. It's completely wild. That's insane. I want to. I want to deep dive into that, actually. Yeah. We could yeah, honestly we deep dive into because that's like how, how, you know, anime kind of came to America in a from certain Texas. way. From Texas. From Texas. And yeah. that's why cause I often, I really wondered why yeah. all of the voice actors were Texan when I was stalking them as a teenager. <laughs> not actually stalking, <laughs> as in not, like. Not literally. I remember, oh my God, this is so embarrassing, oh but God. I'm going to tell this story. I, oh, back in the days of MySpace. Um, Jesus. I added as a friend, <laughs> the, the actor. Like I added him as a friend or like Which actor? The actor who voiced Kiyoya in Oran High School Host Club and also Sebastian in Black Butler. Oh, who I just, another Dusky Ono crossover. Yeah, I um I've forgotten his name now, but like sorry man, like it was so weird. I literally added him and then wrote on his like face his no. MySpace page, like, no. hey, like sorry, this is really random, but I just think you're really great, like really great work in Oran High School. I was like 15. Like, oh, what was I doing? Like, it's so desperate and weird. Like, 
Anyway, I'm, I'm really appreciative of that guy. He wrote back. He was like, wow, thank you so much. And that's just cool. Like, block. That's good. That's real good. Yeah, that's nice. Like, yeah, that's fine. That's block. Fine. Yeah, block. Insta block. Insta block. Oh, yeah. No, my um. Oh, shit. That is very funny. Just yeah. deactivated his MySpace page. Like, <laughs> so bad. Anyway. It was early I, internet. It was rogue. Yes, it was rogue. It was, <laughs> it was rogue out yeah. there. But um, no, I was, um, yes, I was a fan of all these voice actors. I really was. But clearly. Yeah. MySpace friends. I can't believe I've forgotten his name. So. Well, there you go. It's even more embarrassing for him. <laughs> if, you're, um, if you're watching, write in. I will say, actually, I will shout him out because I do think he was really great. And this is a sh- this is actually a crossover because I talked about uh, Mamoru Miyano mm-hmm. before, and he voiced this character in Steins Gate. Oh, uh, the voice actor who who voiced Rintaro Okabe along with Mamoru Miyano, an iconic performance by Mamoru Miyano as well. But also J. Michael Tatum um, did a fantastic job of that too. So shout out to him. I was obviously a big fan of his work as I so publicly declared. But yeah, you're, you're fantastic. Good job. <laughs> Thanks, J. Michael. He also voiced voiced Irwin Smith. In the English adaptation. <laughs> See, we're, this whole episode is just like circling coming back, back around. And forward, we're circling back, and back, and here we go. See, crazy. I'm so jealous of these people. I just want a little segue. I'm so jealous of these motherfuckers. Imagine just getting in on this and just like now you're in. You're on the sock. You're on the circle. You can just now just keep going here, going there. Now I'm doing this. Now I'm doing yeah, that. Yeah. God damn. Yeah, yeah. So, so many cool, of them dude. became like directors of series as well. And yes. Like, yeah. It's yeah. awesome. Anyway, so Graham, please take it away. Yeah, I think everyone. If everyone in the Western world has ever watched anime is going to know, at least have heard this voice. Would have at least, you might not know the name, Chris Sabat, but you will definitely have heard your voice if you've watched anime between the last 25 years. Oh, yeah. This, this is legendary stuff here. Um, I'll just take one show and just rattle off, you know, the voices he does for Dragon Ball. Then we'll talk about other stuff because, I mean, Vegeta, Piccolo, Yamcha. Shenron, Corin, Gohan, the list goes on just Jesus. for that one show. Is it just a one man band? Just one guy <laughs> just having every conversation with himself. You know? Holy shit. I, I mean, I knew he did you know? like Vegeta and Pickle and stuff. I didn't realize he did all of that. Well, he goes on. Like it just goes on and on and on. More notable stuff that he's also been a part of. He is the voice of uh, Zoro. Oh, One Piece. One Piece. Shit. Which he's done 550,000 episodes of. He's also the voice of All Might. Oh, shit. Oh, okay. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Yami and Black Clover. Oh, uh, Why is Yami? Armstrong and Full Metal Alchemist. So good. Like, Jesus. it just, you could just keep going. Also, video games as well. He's Deus Ex Machina, mm-hmm. Metroid Prime. I'm not, it's so much. Yeah. Too much. He is like an absolute legend. One of the absolute legends of English voice acting in. <laughs> In, especially in anime, like my god, anything that's, that's been pretty much made in the last twenty years. He's just everything. He's, he's the guy. Yeah. yeah, of all of the like, obviously Matthew Mercer these days, but like Matthew Mercer would owe a lot to Chris Sabat for sure. Oh, like I think we all do. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Kieran when he came onto the show to talk about Dragon Ball, he mentioned Chris Sabat mm. and got very, very passionate about the Majin Buu sort of his, speech. Yeah, his love stuff, for like, yeah, yeah, the yeah, and, yeah, extraordinary stuff. Like, yeah, he's an absolute legend. And again, another example of like one of those things. Obviously, we all grew up watching the dub. Right. Oh, I will not watch the the subtitled yeah. Dragon Ball in any yeah. capacity. I think yeah, we mentioned right. this. We all like, got totally indoctrinated on that. Yeah. And like, also, he's insanely good. Oh, he's so good. <laughs> it's very because also, and this is what I want to talk about. You mentioned it before about the like, what's so interesting about anime, right? Is the passion, right? So obviously, there's something about the storytelling in anime. We've talked about this a lot, many different times, but like, just how impassioned it is as a medium and how hard the characters go, how big all the emotions are. And as a major contributing factor to that is the ability of particularly Japanese voice actors to go that hard. I mean, the lead voice actor, as we speak for solo leveling, coughed up blood. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that doing the rounds on, on Insta and stuff at the moment. Fully coughed up blood in, I think it was in the second episode. Um, that a lot of screaming. A lot of like, <sighs> shit is cr- like Romy Park, perfect example. But I mean, like one of the reasons, and it's interesting you said this before, like when you, th- it's really often the one you hear first. Yes, to a degree. But I've got to say, Formal Alchemist Brotherhood, I watched the dub first because of Formal Alchemist. Love it. Excellent dub. I watched the last time I watched Formal Alchemist Brotherhood, I've watched it four times all the way through. There will be a fifth soon. Went back and watched the dub recently, and I was like, this is great. This is great. But. The sub shit's all over it. The sub's way better. Like the subtitles, are, like I just think, yes, there are some. There are some cases where it is better, but I honestly believe that the ability of the Japanese voice actors to just 
go to those places. Now, obviously, it's much more ingrained and it's written you know, by Japanese people for Japanese people. Therefore, it's a very distinctive style. And even with localization, even when it's at its best, I don't think it ever gets to that level, which is why I choose to watch subtitles. Don't, and don't get me wrong, the voice acting of all the people we just mentioned and, and English voice acting these days is elite. It's out of control and I love it. And I'm never going to be one of those people who's like, you have to watch subtitles. But if I could give my opinion to you if you asked i'd say i would suggest you watch the subtitles but if it is the difference between you watching it and not watching it my god go for the yeah, dubs there's They're so fantastic. there's so many different reasons why people might not want some to people can't to... read no honestly yeah, yeah. Just like, yeah, no, honestly, <laughs> yeah. Just, i've got a friend i've got actually, a friend who exactly has that yeah. problem he can't or, speed up keep up with the subtitles people like, want fair to, enough like you know yeah. in this world want to be able to like zone out a bit and enjoy without having to be, look at the screen to understand and yeah, read yeah, as it sure. goes want to like do something yeah. else like cook while doing something um, I'm just going to mention a couple of uh, other iconic English mm. anime voice actors. We've got Johnny Yong Bosch. How's this for a resume? Vash, the Stampede. Ooh. Trigon, Ichigo, Kurosaki, Bleach. Ooh, nice. um, Yu Narakami in Persona 4, obviously the, the show that everyone wants to be in. And <laughs> once again, Lelouch from Code Geass. And nice. I actually think that the Code Geass dub is as good as the sub. It is a as the very original. good. And it was one of the first really good dubs. I mean, for yeah, my Lacomus as well, but I think because it happened before that, it was 2007, 2000. six or seven around there. And I think that Full Metal Lacomus 2003 was like a different thing oh, entirely. Yes, oh, yes. Underrated show. Watch it. Doesn't get the credit that it's just deserves old. It's now. just old. You know, like I think those who know, like, it's highly rated amongst those of us who were there, but I don't think like it gets its due now amongst modern fans, I think. Yeah. Says also the voice actor who did, of course, we couldn't, we couldn't not mention him, but Spike Spiegel. Oh. So we have, I mean, he's not called Spike Spiegel. I was going to get his name. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the coincidence. Uh. So the voice actor for Spike Spiegel is, of course, Steve Bloom, mm. who's in a lot of things, including like Star Wars, like, like yeah, quite a prolific yeah. voice actor who's not necessarily only known for anime. Mm. Done a lot of like yeah, Star Wars, that kind of voiceover, video games, that sort of thing. Incredibly iconic voice. The voice of Faye is also, like, anyone in this cast is, like, oh. an iconic voice actor. Uh, Wendy Lee, who's in a bunch of things. Best known for Faye Valentine and also Haruhi Suzumiya in The Melancholy of Haruhi uh, yes. Suzumiya, which is a show that no one really talks about anymore. And I'm pretty certain she's Yorichi at the start of Bleach. I think they've recast that since. Uh, but there's uh, a lot of, um, there's, she's a, Wendy Lee is a very famous voice actor. And those two were kind of, like, very well-respected. And because Cowboy Bebop was dubbed, you know, elsewhere, not with the Texas voice acting, which has a stronghold on anime dubs, apparently. Yeehaw. I think you're going to do a sell your family business on, yeah. on the whims of someone be like, it's going to work, baby. Yeah. Japanese Smart cowboy star. We're going yeah. to make millions. It works. And they did. Yeah, so voice acting is so important to making a character work or not. And also just like the skills of an actor and how someone can interpret a character, and particularly when it comes to originating a voice for a character, so with the Japanese seiyus, which is kind of obviously how that works, seeing, you know, reading the source material, looking at a character, and then trying to, like, pitch a voice that you think would oh. suit it, and then everyone to agree, and, like, putting that all those moving parts together. Most anime, you are dubbing to, obviously, you're, you kind of match mouth flaps. Mm. So you see in the booth, they it's not, like, in Disney, as we've talked about many times in Disney, you have the voice actors record before they animate and they animate around the acting choices or the script choices. It's the opposite in television, televised anime. I know there's a couple of movies that they do the opposite with. That's not only like I'm someone's trying to yell at me and be like, that's a hard tech. rule. But I think for the majority of televised anime, it is very much you're trying to match the character flap. Sorry, the mouth flap. <laughs> character Jesus Christ. <laughs> You're trying to match the mouth flap of the character from the booth. And there's like yeah. a, you can yeah. see like clips, you just get like a time. Anyone who's done voiceover work, you just get like a beep, beep, beep. And then you just pause and you've got to start and try and match it up. It's hard. Man. It's so hard. Yeah. It's yeah. even harder it's for English dub actors because yeah, it's not yeah, sure. animated with any kind of. So that's a whole other thing. That's why I have a lot of respect for the amount of love and care that goes into these dubs recently. And there's a really interesting thing on YouTube uh, with the Fruits Basket making of the English dub, the reboot uh, was really interesting that you can see the amount of love that these actors who've all kind of, you know, 2001 voices and then went away and they've all come back to do it because they have such a love for it and you see kind of like how the industry has progressed in america for anime in that time which i thought was really interesting so yeah check that out i find i have yeah i think dubs can be just as good as subs i prefer to watch it in the original as well for all the reasons that you stated too but 
Yeah, do whatever you want. I mean, it's all good. This is the thing about Gateway Anime, right? We're here to get you into the anime. And if, again, for those of you who are already in, like us, we're just here to talk about it and get excited about it and just sort of praise and critique. But obviously, like, in many ways, we do this show because we love the medium. And these voice actors are all absolutely extraordinary. All of them are. And again, a little bit like the animators out there who are, you know, working crazy hours. A lot of these voice actors as well, crazy. And again, like... If you come across sometimes in Twitter, I'm looking in your direction, you know, when voice actors aren't meeting the expectation that you have, maybe just take a minute instead of going at them or screaming about them on Twitter or whatever, just be like, hey, all right, this isn't to my taste. This isn't something that I necessarily agree with. You're more than happy, more than allowed to have that opinion and to even express that opinion. But don't attack people on Twitter for it you know what I mean the actual people anyway I just wanted to, to bring that up because like I just I feel strongly about that you know what I mean it's like you're allowed to critique we critique all the time perfectly fine but there's a way to do it respectfully and it's uh, fine to like add them on MySpace <laughs> and, <laughs> and be like example. really Stalk good them. job <laughs> okay at least that was that wholesome so and weird. that was weird awesome. that is Don't, actually wholesome and nice oh so. no it was just probably a to... fan account looking back and I just thought I was talking to this guy. <laughs> so <laughs> bad being like, Some other anyway, Some don't random worry. guy in Texas probably. Yeah, <laughs> we got a stranglehold that on this him. industry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, look, we just wanted to talk about voice acting because it's not something we've really talked about outside of our, one of our first ever episodes where Charlie and I debated about the merits of subtitles versus dubbed. And, you know, we've got a little bit of that in here today, which I think is important. But at the end of the day, just enjoy what you like. And if you like the dubs better, do what you want. You know what I mean? Like enjoy the things that you like and don't worry about, you know, there are, there are fans out there who are like, you have to watch the subtitles. And I look, I used to be like that, but you're now still it's just like, absolutely like that. You're just putting on a front for this podcast. <laughs> like, I know. Rant this about 20 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> can't keep up. No, honestly, like I honestly really think that you can, you know, do what do what you like. Watch watch what makes you happy or more likely to watch it. That's the thing. And I really don't, you know, I have an opinion that I like to express about it, but I'm not militant about it. I'm not anymore. It's just like, for the love of God, don't worry about it. Don't worry, how does it affect me? You know what I mean? I think you might enjoy it more watching a subtitle. That's my opinion, but that's just my opinion. Anyway, this is our episode on voice actors in anime. What's your, like, top voice acting moment from an, like an, an anime voice actor like, i mentioned it before mine i've already spoken irwin? mine it's irwin's speech 100 anything else that rings out to me a, like an amazing moment of voice acting romy park uh her when spoiler for my brotherhood if you want to skip forward 30 seconds give you a chance now when romy park when al sacrifices his body to give ed his arm back and he screams you idiot she screams, you idiot. Mm -hmm. One of the mm -hmm. most guttural, extraordinary pieces of voice acting I've ever heard. Pretty much anything Romy Park does, but that is my favourite moment of Romy Park. So, yeah, those are two that really stand out for me. I mentioned it, but Mamma Romiano as the uh, spoiler for Death Note. <laughs> <laughs> 2007 um, anime Death Note. Spoiler. But, you know, when they finally realise that he is Kira. Yes. And he has that absolutely maniacal laugh Unhinged. and it's unhinged and because the rest of his voice performance is so measured mm. as light and there's just moments of being unhinged and he just goes like full pelt it's one of my favorites i love That's, it yeah. subaru re-zero when emily's in the bed and he's just like kind of just screaming at her just saying you don't know what i've sacrificed oh for you God. and you just don't know what i've been through and whatever oh. the, 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 oh, it's just, oh. Yeah, it's one of my favorite moments in all anime. Actually. It's it's really it's good. It's really well done. Moment. Yeah, and it's such a powerful scene for good and bad. Yeah, but her that, that, to it's brilliant. That performance was fucking crazy. Also, want to do a shout out to uh, All Might, United States of Smash. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking about that. One yeah. of my favorite voice acting moments of all time, and all moments in anime. Full stop. Um, I feel like that's a hard sell in the dub as well. Like hard, way, hard. All Might is a very hard role oh. to to voice in general. But I think that, yeah, for a dub, I think it's it's really fantastic. Also, the voice actor who's doing the dub for Bakugo kills it. Because oh. that's another mm. one where you go, this is going to be so hard yeah, for, to translate to, and to not localize. be like, and honestly, really good job. So My Hero Academia, ticking some boxes in their dub as well. Absolutely. We could do this for hours and look hit us up with your favorite voice actors you know obviously we've we know we've missed a lot otherwise we'd literally be here for six hours so hit us up with your favorites hit us up in the comments on whatever platform you're consuming this on and of course as i mentioned at the top you can find us on our social media platforms instagram tiktok 
and YouTube, which hopefully you are watching this podcast on. But if you are listening, please, please, please head over to Spotify and or Apple Podcasts and leave us a five-star review. Even write a nice little blurb on Apple Podcasts if you want. It really does make a difference. If you really like what we're doing, you can find us on Patreon, where you will get special episodes every second Friday, as well as early releases of these podcasts and behind-the-scenes stuff. So... Thank you so much for listening to our voiceover acting episode. And Charlie, Graham, thanks for joining me. Thanks for sharing me some of your favorite moments. It's great. Mm. Thanks. Good times. Catch you soon. Bye.